I have got to do better than this. So I did. As a content creator and as a producer, I've really started to hit the upper limit of what my system can actually do for me. And to a certain extent, I've done a great job at managing the resources that I did have. But at this point, especially after a year of creating videos for YouTube, it's gotten out of hand and I really needed something that could manage it better, not just now, but in the future. So here it is, meet the Express 4M2 from OWC. I like it, it's got a mysterious look to it. I think it's really cool. So this is a Thunderbolt 3 four slot NVMe drive enclosure. It's pretty hard to say that. Now, if you've followed me on the channel for some time, you know that I constantly speak of NVMe M.2 drives. Um, and this might be the best enclosure that I've come across. So let's take a look at why I think that. Oh yeah, here's why, right here. Maybe we should get a better look at that. Stick with me. All right, that is cool. So there they are, the four bays, NVMe M.2. There we go. You see, you could hold up to 32 terabytes with one of these things. And you could configure that into a RAID Array 0, which basically makes all of those drives act as if it was one drive, for lack of a better term. When you do that, you also get blazing fast speeds. This thing is rated up to 2800 megabits per second. That's awesome. For me to be able to expand to that large of a drive size, that's pretty cool. Now, similarly to other Thunderbolt devices, it has a DC in to power this because you need some power for these drives. Can't operate off of bus power. That's too, too much power for this thing. It's got a display port um, so you could connect a screen to it. Uh, Thunderbolt throughput and then a Thunderbolt input to connect to your computer. It doesn't get any flashier than that, which is fine. It has a fan on the backside and overall this thing is just cool. Now, when you read the notes, this thing is fully backwards compatible with Thunderbolt 2. So if you have older peripherals that you want to daisy chain, this should handle that no problem. Now, I will say I run into a specific scenario where if I daisy chained this, where this was the middle device in the chain, if I tried to add another Thunderbolt 3 device that was bus powered, it did not power it. Um, so that's important to note. However, if you connect this directly to your MacBook, that problem was fixed. Installing the drives is crazy easy. As you saw, you just pop the cover off, take the fan out of the way, pop the drive in, close it back up, boom. There you go, super easy to do. You see this drive is really blazing fast. However, there is a bit of a catch. In order to get those really fast speeds, you need to create a RAID. This drive is meant for someone who is really doing some intense work. So if you were to just put four drives in this thing and, uh, and you format those drives each independently, it shows up that way and on your computer. You have independent drives. Now, if you were to run a speed test on that, they run at like 600 megabits per second, which is still really fast. That's about the speed of your average USB-C SSD, which is great. But we want the blazing fast speed. So how does that work? If you consider how it's designed, how it has four bays, you start to kind of piece this together. Now, I don't have anything that confirms this. This is just kind of what I've noticed. When you put this device into a RAID 0, what it does is it basically looks at all four of the drives as one drive. And what that kind of leads me to believe is that the way it was designed is that the 40 gigabits per second of Thunderbolt 3 is spread across each bay and you have four bays. So each bay is getting about 10 gigabits per second, which is about the speed of the USB-C. And then when you combine all of the drives, now you're getting the full bandwidth across all of the drives. And then you can get those crazy fast speeds. So that's very important to know. I didn't know that on the front side and that's my fault. I didn't, I didn't pay attention to that. So, 
I'm waiting on two more drives to arrive tomorrow in order to complete this. Currently, I've configured this with the two drives and they're both one gig drives. They can read and write crazy fast for the drives themselves, they're Gen 4s. And I'm getting speeds uh, about half of what this thing can do. So when you read the manual, it says that you can put basically any drive in there and that's true. But if you're gonna put a RAID 0, you need to make sure that all of the drives are the same size. So I've got two one terabyte cards in each slot and I've got two more terabytes arriving tomorrow. I'm gonna complete this into a RAID, which you'll probably see in this video. But let's plug this in and take a look at how you'd configure the drive and kind of work with the drive. Okay, so assuming that you've already installed your drive into the device, the first thing that's gonna happen when you plug it in is it's gonna ask you to initialize your drive. And there's two ways to do that. You could use the soft RAID software. The alternative way of doing it is just using what's built in on your Mac. And I know a lot of people probably prefer that method as a lot of people kind of just go, hey, I like my own software. Earlier, I had mentioned the RAID configuration. We're gonna to touch on that in just a second. If you want to have individual drives, this is how you would do it. You'd find your drive in the list, you'd erase, and then you'd choose APFS. You could do case sensitive if you want lowercase and uppercase folders to make an impact. For right now, for this example, we're just going standard APFS, and I'm going to name this untitled one, we're gonna erase. There we go. She's done. And now we're going to erase this one as well. We're gonna name this untitled two and a PFS as well. All right, there we go. Let's do a speed test. Let's check it out. Let's select our target drive, bay one. Let's test it out. All right. Interesting. Okay. All right. Very cool. All right, all right, so these test results are pretty in line with what I would expect. You see, if you take four bay drives and divide it amongst 40 gigabits per second, then that kind of means you're gonna get this kind of performance if you make each drive its own, its own independent drive. Once you make it a RAID configuration, now you're going to be taking that bandwidth and spreading it across all of the drives internally on the 4M2. And from there, you're gonna see a very significant increase in speed. So let's check that out. So we'll go back over here and now we're gonna go up to RAID Assistant. We're gonna configure the RAID 0 and choose both of these drives. Now, we're gonna keep it APFS since that's what those uh, SSDs prefer. And we're gonna call this RAID Test one, we're gonna choose our chunk size to be larger for like video editing, things like that. And yes, we'll create. All right, now you can see, now you can see it says that the RAID configuration is successful. Now let's, let's think about this, right? So if theoretically, since I only have two drives at this moment, now we should see the bandwidth double. Let's see if that holds true. All right, target drive, RAID test one, open, test. Booyah, okay, awesome. This is good news. And look at that. Okay, cool. So that is awesome, and I'll tell you why. We have two one terabyte drives taking up half of the bandwidth. Now, the advertised speed is up to 2,800 megabits per second. And if we're average read-write, right about 12 to 14, well, that's half of 28, right? First tests, we're getting about 600, 700, somewhere in there, which is right about half of what we're seeing here. That is consistent. That is very good. Each drive is consistently reading and writing at the speed that it's advertising, and I like that. So. Now we're gonna do a test with a RAID 0 with all four bays filled out. 
which I'm actually doing tomorrow in the video, but you're seeing it right now, which is very weird. So here is four terabytes in a RAID 0 configuration. And as you can see, the test results are, again, quite consistent, and it does a heck of a job. Okay, back to the past. That's very weird. Anyways, let's keep talking about this thing. So at $250 or $350 for the 32 terabytes, that's absolutely bonkers with what you can do with that device. It's certainly fast enough to do a ton of stuff with specifically video editing. I absolutely love it for that. And that's exactly what I plan on using it for. This is gonna be my main content drive to hold all of that good stuff. Now I don't typically do this on my channel, but if you're a cinematographer or photographer, or if you're someone who's working with a lot of really large project file sizes, you need this thing. Really wanna think about picking this thing up. It's fast enough to last the test of time over the next handful of years for sure. It's going to last you years and years and years. And let me tell you why. So right now we're at Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, which is just starting to kind of trickle its way into computers right now. And really there's not much of a protocol difference between the two. And of course, Thunderbolt 4 is backwards compatible with Thunderbolt 3. Well, what happens when you go to Thunderbolt 5? I'd be willing to bet that it's backwards compatible with Thunderbolt 3 and 4 which means we're probably a handful of years out with that being the primary iteration. Now, the coolest part about knowing that is that as the years go on, to outfit this drive with all 16 or 32 terabytes is gonna become a lot more affordable. So you make the investment now, you're gonna have incredible storage space and a great storage library for years to come. And like I said, it's still highly likely that it's going to be supported well into the future. And the drives themselves are blazing fast and definitely fast enough for today's and tomorrow's bandwidth needs. Plus, it looks freaking killer. It's, uh, it, yeah, just kind of has that mysterious look to it. It's kind of like a mini computer, almost like a server. Great job, OWC, for putting this thing together. An incredibly consistent device. It delivers bandwidth consistently. It doesn't try to do anything that it's not. It just does its one job and it does it really well. Anyways, if you found this video review useful, even in the slightest, please do me a favor and hit the like button. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the uh, OWC and uh, subscribe to the channel for more. And I really don't do these video reviews often, but I've got plenty of other things that I can review for you on this channel if you like the video review series. So also let me know in the comments if I should keep reviewing things. I don't typically like to be very technical with the review. I kind of like to be very practical. So again, let me know. And if you'd like to support the channel further, go to thestevekinney.com where you can schedule one-on-one -on -one time with me. We can talk all things Luna, UAD, or really just whatever you want to talk about. And until the next video, guys, cheers.